Are you a pluviophile? Do you love petrichor? What is petrichor? How is it used in fragrances? And why do we love it so much? Those are the questions that I'm going to answer today in this video, so please keep watching. Hello, I'm Claire Smith and welcome to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about petrichor and it's actually part of my perfume science series. So if you like that kind of content, then please press the like button and please also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. If you're already subscribed, then thank you so much for coming back and it means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. So thank you very much. So petrichor is something that I have been fascinated by for a long, long time. Ever since I started watching videos on YouTube and hearing about this mystery word, petrichor, I was just curious to know what it was, how it smelt, and just how did they make that smell? How did that actually get in a perfume bottle? So let's start off with the basics. What is petrichor? Well, petrichor describes smell that you get after rain, especially rain when it's a little bit warm. And petrichor is a fragrance that is enhanced when the earth is drier. So if you have a long heat wave and then you have a very gentle rainstorm afterwards, that is probably the time when you're going to notice the smell of petrichor most. I think petrichor is one of those things that you might not know its name, but you've definitely smelt it. So petrichor is actually quite a modern term. It was only coined in 1964 by two mineralogists who were studying the effects of rainfall on cow behaviour. They noticed that cows seemed to seek out drinking water whenever it had rained, and they tried to find out what was causing this. And they actually discovered that it was a smell given off by the earth after rain. And that smell they called petrichor. So petrichor actually derives from two Greek words. So Greek for stone, petra, where we also get the word petrified from, literally turning to stone and ichor, which is the golden liquid flowing in the bloodstream of the gods. So why are we pre-programmed to love the smell of petrichor? Well, I think it's just like the cattle, really. It was very important to our survival. If you woke up and could smell that it had rained, then that would be a time for you to go out and forage. That would be a time for you to go and look for water sources. That would be a time when animals would be more active, where you would be more likely to catch something. So that kind of sensing of that smell would have been really crucial to our survival. So rain has lots of other pleasant associations for humans. The sound of rain can be particularly relaxing. How many people listen to those rain sound videos on YouTube when they're trying to drift off? How many people sleep much better when it's raining heavily outside? Watching rain, watching water, watching it trickle can also be really relaxing. And so it's not really a surprise that we love the smell of rain as well as the sight and the sound of it. So in a way, we're all pluviophiles. We're all lovers of rain. So what is generating that petrichor smell? Well, petrichor doesn't refer to summer rain. It refers to the smell generated by the rain hitting the surface of the earth. So either the soil or, or the concrete or the smell of it hitting plant life. And that releases a number of different compounds. So it's the combination of those compounds that produce the petrichor smell. And that smell can be different depending upon where you are, how strong the rain is, various different things. It's very individual to your location and the atmospheric conditions. So petrichor generated in the countryside, perhaps in a, a forest, will, be, will smell very differently to petrichor generated in an urban environment, just because of the nature of the different surfaces and the different plants that are present in those locations. So there are three main groups of compounds that contribute to the smell of petrichor. And the first one is really something that is not always present or is not always present in such high quantities. And that is ozone. So ozone is actually a form of oxygen. So the normal oxygen molecule that we breathe in and that is essential for life is O2. Ozone is O3. And ozone is only really formed under high energy conditions. So conditions like lightning or welding, or you might have smelt it perhaps on the underground or the subway where you are. There's a, there's a very particular scent to, under, to underground stations to me. And not, I'm not talking about the filth. I'm talking about just that there's like this electrical charge kind of smell about an underground station. So ozone is kind of sharp, metallic, sparky. It just, it just smells like electrical sparking. We are really sensitive to ozone. Ozone is something that is toxic to us. We can smell it down to 10 parts per billion. 
because it's toxic at levels of one in 10 million. Nitrogen can also be in this mix and nitric oxide is a really sharp and sweet smelling gas. So that can also be part of the petrichor makeup. The second compound and probably the most crucial to the smell of petrichor is geosmin. So geosmin literally translates from the Greek as earth smell. So geosmin is a chemical that is released when certain types of soil bacteria die, which is a really beautiful thought, isn't it? And you might have smelt geosmin when you dig a garden or when you harvest beetroot. Beetroot is a really good example of the smell of geosmin, that kind of damp, earthy smell that you get with raw beetroot. Beetroot has one of the highest concentrations of geosmin. In high concentrations, geosmin can, can smell just really unpleasant. It can smell like a damp cellar. It's really musty. So it's only really pleasant in the form of petrichor because in petrichor, the amount of geosmin is really quite low. And in petrichor, Geosmin is in the context of different compounds, which I'm going to talk about later, which make it smell better. So as I've hinted at, humans are incredibly sensitive to the smell of geosmin. Humans can smell it down to five parts per trillion. So to put that in context, if you think about a shark trying to search out blood, sharks can only detect blood at one part per million. So actually human noses are over 200,000 times more sensitive to geosmin than sharks are to blood. The third component of petrichor are terpenes. So terpenes are plant oils and those are what makes petrichor so different depending upon your location because the plants that are present are going to give off different terpenes. So plants not only impart their oils to the surfaces that are around them, so the soil or the pavements, but they also are subject to micro damage when it rains. So the action of the rain falling on the plants causes minute fissures in the plant material, which then releases some of these terpene oils. The longer and hotter the dry spell, the more of those oils are absorbed to surfaces and the greater the release of those compounds from the surface when it does rain. So terpenes are actually responsible for the fresh smell of pine, the coolness of peppermint and the spice in ginger. Limonene is a really good example of a terpene and that is a component that's used a lot in fragrances. Limonene is something that can give obviously citrus fruit kind of nuances to fragrances and is also found in peppermint. So different terpenes are going to be found in different localities and that is going to be what determines what your local smell of petrichor is. So you might live right near a pine forest, in which case your local smell of petrichor might be based more around the pinene terpene. Or if you're in Italy, you might live near a lemon grove, in which case your smell of petrichor might be based more around limonene. Or you might be lucky enough to live in New Zealand and live right next to a tea tree plantation, in which case your experience of petrichor will be more based around terpinoline. So is petrichor in fragrances a new thing? Actually, the answer is no. So there's a village in Uttar Pradesh in India who've been making fragrances based around petrichor, even though it wasn't called petrichor since 1911. So they take blocks of, of clay that's been sitting out in the sun and they basically distill it. So they will add some water to it and then boil it up and they will capture the essence that comes off this clay and blend it with sandalwood oil and they bottle this and they call it the scent of the earth, Atar Mati. So this is the first example of a fragrance based around petrichor. So if you want to smell petrichor in fragrances, which note should you look out for? Well, the first and most obvious thing that you can look out for is geosmin, but perfumers tend to shy away from using geosmin and actually there are very few fragrances that I know of with geosmin actually in them. I think the reason for this is perhaps because geosmin can be very musty smelling. You can end up with a fragrance that reminds people of beetroot, which is probably not going to be a bestseller. Other notes can really elicit that petrichor smell and perfumers can really play with your imagination by including a range of other notes to give you the feelings of things after the rain. So, you might want to use, for example, very dilute patchouli or vetiver to give you a wet earth feel. Or you might want to reach for something that's going to give you something ozonic to give you a thunderstorm feel. Or perhaps something that is green, like, like moss, or something that is woody, perhaps. 
even perhaps some modern musks might be something that could give you the feeling of water on surfaces. You may have checked a fragrance's notes on Fragrantica and seen something listed such as rain. And rain is clearly a fantasy note, they're not bottling rain, but they're mimicking the smell of rain using compounds such as mellifleur and florazone. So if you want to experience petrichorium perfumes, which fragrances should you go smell? Well, I think one that is out right now and one that partially inspired this video is When the Rain Stops by Maison and Margiela Replica Fragrances. So I went to smell that one recently in a department store and I was shocked by how much it reminded me of summer thunderstorms. So it, the opening does have a very strong petrichor feeling to it. I think there is geosmin in this fragrance and you do get that. It's very green and it's very earthy at points. It's definitely a quite watery feeling as well. It's also got ozonic notes. It just feels very much like a really good example of petrichor. I wouldn't say it's something that I would want to purchase. It didn't, it didn't make me think that I wanted to smell like that. But when I smelt it, I did recognise there was petrichor there. So overall, it's just a fresh, green, watery feeling fragrance. So there are many other fragrances that have petrichor notes in them or other notes that can suggest petrichor. And I'm just going to list a few here. I don't, I'm not going to go into masses of detail because some of these I haven't smelt and I don't want to lead you astray, basically. So the first one is Un Jardin Sous le Nil by Hermès. This one is described as something that smells like a garden after the rain. So that might be a good one to check out. There's also Sea of Grey by Solstice Scents. That one is described as a beach after the rain. So a salty beach kind of fragrance, but after a rainstorm. There's also Concrete Rain by All Saints. That one is described as something that smells like a city after the rain. Then there's the more straight one note kind of fragrances. So there's Petrichor and there's also Thunderstorm by Demeter or the fragrance library if you're in the UK. I have smelt Thunderstorm and I wouldn't say that Demeter fragrances are necessarily easy to wear. They're things that do smell like what they are meant to smell like. They're just straight up, what you see is what you get. I think really the thing with Petrichor is you want it in with other notes because I don't think many people would want to smell like straight up Jasmine. It, it's just not something that is appealing to most people. It's something that can smell a bit green and musty. And the final fragrance that I would suggest would be Bay 19 by Le Labo. So this fragrance is one that is described as having the crisp wet effect of earth after the rain. And that has notes of juniper, patchouli and green leaves and might also be one to check out. So please let me know your favourite petrichor fragrance and what you think of the scent of petrichor. Do you just like smelling it outside in natural surroundings and maybe you're not so bothered about it in fragrance? Or is it something that is just piquing your curiosity and do you want to go and sniff that Maison Margiela? Or are you thinking it's just not for you because, you know, it is a bit green, it is a bit musty and maybe you don't like metallic notes. Maybe you think that ozonic fragrances are not for you. So yes, please let me know down below. And also, if you like this video, please like the video and also consider subscribing if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.